welcome to finally welcome to pretty hustler tv super 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 excited <sighs> it took a long time for me to get here to this very 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 point a long time to get here to this very 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 point okay as you can see i'm not in no fifty thousand dollar studio with no big ass production team. It's just me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. That's all I got in the end. My little Walmart microphone. My handy dandy notebook with all my notes. Yes, ma'am. Get into it. I'm recording on phone number one. Sorry, technical difficulties. I just snatched the mic out of its place. But yes, I'm recording off two phones. I will be doing a giveaway for one audio listener and one YouTube channel commenter, if I said that right. It will be the Pretty Hustler package, okay? It will come with a satin bag, a bonnet, one edge wrap, and a face mask, okay? This is good material, okay? This face mask, I had this literally for two years. Literally. The same one I be using. I wear my own products on my face, on my hair, Anytime I do my hair or others' hair, I use my own products. And, you know, they last for a very nice while. They're good quality. Um, the bonnet might look a little wrinkly because it's so many. I have, like, I, I had, like, 500 at the time, so ain't no telling how many I have left. But I have so many left that it's just been sitting up, wrapped up all day long. So they are a little wrinkly, but trust me, they last a good while, okay? We got some... Um, Is anybody in the hallway? Did you guys hear that? I'm scared. <sighs> Did I do the intro? Oh, Lord. We're going to have a long way to go. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's get into it, okay? So, a quick little, um, quick little get to know me sesh okay i'm 23 going on to 53 okay if you know you know i am a capricorn i'm from chicago illinois lady in the streets freaking the sheets only if you ain't cheap <laughs> like i said i am mia mac that's m-i-a-m-a-c-c -C, like the two c's on the chanel your nigga bought me and you're now to the into pretty hustler tv the one and only honey okay period so Let's get into a little overview of, of today's episode, okay? We are going to be getting into some earth gossip. That's going to be a segment about current events. We'll get into some teacup topics, some topics that you might see trending on the internet. Get into some hustler talk. Talk. That's going to be our money conversations, our business conversations, our entrepreneurial conversations, followed by our hustler hotmail, where we have viewers from the show or people from my Instagram, at least for right now, Email me stories about their life, things going on in their life, and, you know, we're going to give some advice. Well, I give some advice from my perspective and my life, things like that, okay? Yeah, this is my first time doing all of this, but it ain't my first time doing all of this, if that makes sense. This is just my first time doing it for me. So, if you guys is ready to see the journey of this show, um, this is episode one. This is the pilot episode. Like I said, we filming straight from OG House, over East Chicago, Illinois, okay? Nothing special, nothing spectacular, but but we finna run it up. We finna run it all the way up, and we finna do it the right way and do it big, okay? We just starting from ground below. So, if this is something that you might be interested in, okay, tune in, y'all. Tune in, join me for the ride, join me for the journey, okay? This is a journey because it's only up from here, so let's get into some earth gossip okay y'all so on today's segment of earth gossip we got india doing some trifling ass shit y'all let's get into it shall we it says most affordable human hair comes from sewer drains in india reused as hair extensions okay like these people in india are going into drains sewer drains people home sink drains toilet drains whatever the fuck drains you want to call it they're going in these drains they're getting chunks of hair they're going through it they're combing it i hope they're washing it but they're going through it they're combing it and they're bringing it back to life and they're making them into hair extensions now my opinion on that now that's just damn right trifling 
does down my trifling. Now, I get it. I get it because who the fuck, all these Indians and Brazilian and Peruvian women are all not cutting their hair off for us to have it on our head. It just, it just, the sense not making sense. You hear me? But it's like, I don't know. Like, if, 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 if y'all is doing some shit like that, why are y'all recording it and putting it out into the world? Like, that, that, that's, ugh, that is disgusting. Like, we're going to insert video footage. Do you know that most affordable human hair extensions come from city drains? That's right. In India, workers actually collect hair from public drains and plug holes. They clean and treat this hair, making it look nice and shiny. But the truth is, it's not virgin hair. It's straight from the drains. This is the only reason human hair extensions are still affordable. Otherwise, they would all cost thousands of dollars. It's a hidden secret of the beauty industry, and many don't know about it. What do you think? Would you still buy them knowing this? It, it was the chunks of hair and then they pulling it out and it's dripping like, what the fuck is that shit dripping? Like, that shit probably got toothpaste, piss, fucking all type of camel ass on it. Like, don't nobody want that shit, bro. Not me saying no, nobody want it, but they're selling it as human hair. Like, well, like what is the human hair that they selling it with? I hope it ain't Onyx, because I just got some for my Bob. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Your Bob is fat. My what? Your bob. Your hair? My hair. But yeah, y'all, like, that. that is crazy. Um, I wanted to report that in today's Earth Gossip because it's like, ugh. Are you kidding me? Like, ugh. Okay, y'all, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, comment below if you think that's reasonable in today's economy. Because hair, first of all, let's let's talk about the hair economy real quick, the hair world. The re one of the reasons I really stopped selling hair is because these vendors, a.k.a. the motherfuckers in Asia, because we ain't just going to say China, we're going to say them Asian motherfuckers, them Asian people, they wanted them at the same price of what these ladies are selling the wigs for. Like, you wonder why bitches are selling wigs for $1,000 and selling bundles for $500. They're selling it for that much because... The, the market price of hair has tremendously went up. Tremendously. Like, a market price for a wig is, like, fucking $300. You feel me? And that's probably, like, for a 26-inch HD frontal, da 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 So you're going to, to make a profit. You're going to have to sell it for at least 400 And that's just making a hundred back. You feel me? Like, you're not even totally making more than what you're spending like you're spending so much money on here whereas like in order to make it back you're gonna have to sell it for an arm and a leg or do something creative to make your money back because child the the hair industry has just went up it's ridiculous um i think it went up because of the high demand of hair hair is a billion dollar industry let's not get it twisted it's just, I don't know, once people started getting access to those vendors and things like that, the, the market rate went up. The market rate went through the roof. And now that, you know, we're kind of going through a recession, those market prices is still ridiculous. And it's just like, you know, to be a fair business person, we, we ain't even going to do it like that, okay? If you want to know any plugs about any wigs for some good, good prices, check the link in my description, honey. Period. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about India pulling hair for sores. If you was a business owner, would you do something like that? Or, I don't know, comment below. Tell me what the fuck you would do. Next topic. On our next topic of earth gossip. Child, get into this tea. Harvard University, the Harvard University, reportedly offers a course in 2024 titled Taylor Swift in Their World. I'm sorry, Taylor Swift in her world. That would be the name of the class, Taylor Swift in her world. This course will examine and analyze her lyrics and music, Ugh. using it as context for literacy traditions. First of all, that, can we talk about it for a second? Can we get into it for one second? Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift having her own course at Harvard University, one of the best schools in America, if not the best school in America, using her lyrics for literacy traditions, basically using her lyrics to teach fucking English class. Now, let's really get into some tea. If you all have been following Taylor Swift in her concert and things like that, we all know her concert grossed over a billion dollars. Um, I believe Beyonce made like half a billion, that's 500 million, I think. 
Um, Taylor Swift grossed over a billion, and that's how she became a billionaire. But if you've been looking at footages at this lady's concert, we know a lot of things going on in this music industry, and it's a lot of things being exposed right now. And one of those things is Taylor Swift performing witch, witchcraft at her concert. Literal witchcraft at her concert. There was people leaving saying that they didn't remember a damn thing from the concert. They said when she performed certain songs, she didn't, they didn't notice that she performed certain songs till they left. You feel me? It was a lot of things going on. Definitely some witchcraft, rituals, dancing, okay? If you don't believe in that stuff, you don't have to. But the shit is real, and the shit is right in your motherfucking face. We to the context which is the course excuse me that's being held at harvard university for taylor swift if she incorporates witchcraft in her dancing in her videos and in her lyrics and they're teaching it at harvard university and two plus two equal four is all i'm saying honey two plus two equal four Okay, so let me um, put that in my notes. Don't let my child go to Harvard University. Check. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, yeah. Next. Speaking of Harvard, I wanted to touch into, before we get off the um, earth gossip topics, I wanted to touch into my elementary school. So I went to an elementary school called Harvard, okay? It was named Harvard School of Excellence, okay? And, um... A quick little backstory, I was on their cheerleading team. I was a new student, so I was on the cheerleading team. 10 years ago, we um, did a cheer in the auditorium. In the video, you could see, you know, the children team dancer or whatnot. Now, somebody had commented it. Somebody commented seven years ago that was older than me and said, wow, I used to be on the children team too, da, 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 da. Somebody else commented two months ago. And the comment read, hey, this was 10 years ago. In 2013, I was one years old. Now, today, I go to Harvard School of Excellence and they no longer have a children team. And that honestly kind of like, you know, it kind of messed me up a little bit because I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, leaving school, you know, the school is not in the best neighborhood, okay? If, you, if you're from Chicago, you should know where Harvard is. If you don't, it's on 75th and Harvard, okay? That's right between Stewart and Vincennes. If you know, then you know. So with that being said, you know, it, it, it just makes sense of why a lot of kids just be out here in these streets you know what I'm saying? Doing all type of shit, getting caught into all type of trouble, fighting, and you know what I'm saying? Just doing all type of shit they ain't, they ain't got no business doing because the school is losing resources. And I've been saying this for a long time, but now I got my own platform. I'm gonna say it loud and clear on here. The school, these schools, I don't know what's going on because I went to a, a, a mayor financial budget event, okay? If you subscribe to this channel, Pretty Hustler TV, if you subscribe to this channel and watch um, my baddie boss vlog, then you will see that I attended this mayor meeting, okay? The mayor of Chicago, Brandon Johnson, he had a financial financial literacy budget meeting for the youth, da 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 Long story short, in that meeting, they said Chicago has a budget of over. <sighs> Let me not get this wrong. Chicago has a budget of over, I believe, 14 billion dollars billion would it be 14 billion dollars and you mean to tell me that these schools is constantly cutting off things for these kids to do that's why they be like remember after school and you used to have choices of what you want to do after school these kids ain't got no choice but to go outside and be in these streets all day boys and girls okay they're not even giving them no choice to do nothing 
in elementary school, we was playing cheerleading, softball, dance team, fucking whatever they had available. And nowadays, they just ain't got that no more. So it was really, you know, crazy to hear that, crazy that that's, you know, life. Ten years later, I thought the school would excel by then, but it's honestly got worse. So, so hopefully in the next ten years, child, I don't know. I don't even really know what to say about that. I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, it's kind of like fucked up how these kids are just losing resources. Like all the shit we used to do. They can't even do it, and that's why they can't relate to what we can relate to because they they, didn't, they don't got the same opportunities that we get, and vice versa. Not saying that they, you know, this generation is bad. It's just like, damn, what they think is good is not the same things of what we value and thought we was good. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've always been a grown little bitch. I've always been outside doing this and doing that, but I still held on to my childhood and still did, did childhood-like things that still live in my memories that I would want my kids in the future to do. Like, that chilling team I was on, we won first place at Chicago State University. First place. First place. You hear me? So that was a great memory to have. And, you know, it's unfortunate that that school could go from having first place in, like, two, three years in a row, chilling team, to not having one at all. It's a mind boggle, but, hey, I guess it is what it is. On to the next segment. Okay, so in this next segment, I call teacup topics, okay? Usually, I would have my little teacup, like Wendy Williams and stuff like that. But like I said, baby, we we, we on episode one. I'm still getting a lot of shit together as we do it. So y'all just going to be coming up with me. If you're going to come up with me and enjoy the journey with me and watch me glow up, make sure you leave a comment in the chat and and, and put um, hustler. Put hustle in capital letters in the chat with the champion trophy like this. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, put it like that in the chat, period. Yeah. We got teacup topics. Now, for teacup topics, we're going to be getting into the nitty, the gritty. We're going to be getting into some celebrity drama. Let's get into topic number one. Topic number one is going to be business is business, honey. That's the name of this topic. I named it business is business. It stems from the Rod Wave and Boosie situation. If you don't know and haven't been following him, Rod Wave, as he done before, used some of Boosie's lyrics in one of his new songs. He recited it word from word. This is not his first time doing it. He has done it to other artists. This is not t- this is not the first time an artist has done it either. This happens in the music business. But what people fail to realize is it is a music business. Okay, because everybody have their opinions like, oh, Rod Wave could have called him. And no, I'm sorry. Oh, Boosie should have called him and da 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 da. They friends. Why he tripping over this and tripping over that and da 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 da. He's just mad. He just broke a woo. Y'all don't understand the music business, the business side of things, okay? That's how a lot of people get fucked up because they don't know what the fuck they be talking about, know what the fuck they be doing. You cannot go around using people lyrics or songs or beats. That is called a copyright, okay? Motherfuckers can sue you for everything you own if you're using stuff that don't belong to you. Come on, come on, you little short motherfucker. I'm going to sue your ass. Remember in school when we used to have to write essays? And if you write word from word what somebody else was saying online and you try to put it on your essay paper? What was that called? Plagiarism. It was called plagiarism. Uh, you wrote your paper on war and peace. So is there a law against that? <laughs> no, there's not, Karen. But this is the exact same paper, word for word, that you can buy for $15 on termpaper.com. It even has the same title and footnotes. Maybe they copied my paper. I don't think they did. They might have. They didn't. F. Busted. That's damn near like the same thing, okay? You cannot use somebody's lyrics word from word. You can. You would have to get it cleared, a.k.a. you would have to ask the owners, the writers, the publishers of that song, or the producer, if you want to use that beat, you would have to ask them before utilizing them. Imagine you writing a song or whatever. It don't matter if your song was hot or a flop. Imagine you writing a song and you turn over and you hear somebody going word from word 
with your lyrics. Business-wise, no. That's a no, no, no. That's a major no, no. If anybody want to get into music, make sure you um, do your business research. It's not how you do it. You cannot be expecting. And, and the thing was, people was like, ain't they friends? Why would Boosie do that and they friends? First of all, stop expecting friends and family to service you for free, knowing that you would pay full price to others. Period. If that was a white man or if it was like Jay-Z or anybody of that stature and he went word for word like that, matter of fact, he did use some of Jay-Z words before. He um he went um word for word with um song cry, wasn't it? What that song cry? Yeah, I forgot the um Raw Wave song. Um, yeah, he, he literally went word for word with Jay-Z song cry. And you and you just can't do stuff like that. Um, you can't. Like I said, you can't. It's possible because you hear it all the time, but you have to get credit where it's due. If you do it without giving somebody their credit, they most definitely have all rights to sue you by any means necessary. They have all rights to sue you. That's law. That's law. That law. And a lot of people be fucking up because they don't know the law. They think, oh, they just be expecting things for people. No, you have to know your laws. You got to know your laws if you want to be ahead and you want to be smart. Boosie is smart. That's a businessman. Raw Wave need to get up on his business while he all up in the big on, on Instagram, on his stories talking shit. It's okay for me to be a fan of niggas and shit. It was okay for me to be a, a fucking teenager listening to their music and supporting them and shit and fucking with them. But now a nigga growing and shit in the rapper. And nigga say a couple lines because I fuck with such and such. I fuck with that. I fuck with what a nigga said. Like, well, damn, what a nigga say? I fuck with what a nigga say. I said in my soul, fuck nigga on that like I stole some shit. I be fucking up, bringing up all these lyrics like I stole some shit. You dumb bitch, if it's public, it's public record, how the fuck I stole it? I ain't stole no some shit like a bitch was trying to come up with some shit and I stole that shit. What the fuck is you talking about, man? It's your lame shit. Get up on your business and, and you won't have to go through that no more. And that's just on period, you feel me? Like, you know, and, and I like Broadway, you know, I do. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of his music. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like his music be a little sad. It give, it give, push me to the edge. All my friends are dead vibes. Um, you know, which which is not something that I want to hear all the time. I don't want to hear no sad, depressing and shit all the time. Make it make sense. But um, he do got a lot of songs that I do fuck with. I fuck with um, out my business, sack right with Yo Gotti. Anytime somebody talking that money talk, I love to hear it. Okay. Period. Let's tap into his concerts a little bit. Um, speaking of all that sad shit, do y'all be seeing them suicidal endings to his show? Where he literally jumps off like the porch and falls backwards like he committed suicide? And this man been talking about committing suicide since he came out? checking on him can we get somebody to check on Huawei, please because I'm, I'm getting scared for him i really am he has a lot of fans and a lot of people that care about him he needs somebody that care about him in his circle or whoever in his circle if there's nothing wrong with him and he's just speaking like that he needs to change switch the subject real quick because because it's getting very like scary at this point okay all right next topic <laughs> On topic number two of teacup topics, we're going to be talking about how men can't handle women doing better than them. In this instance, we will be getting into the Tiana Taylor divorce from Iman Shepard, okay? Let's get into it. Tiana Taylor divorced Iman. Cut that out. Leaked court documents of Tiana Taylor and Iman Shepard's divorce reveals allegedly she accuses him of being jealous of her fame and secure a narcissist and more. After these um, details came out through these um, through this leaked document, court document, public. I ain't gonna say public, but this is this is a court document from Tiana Taylor and Iman Shepard's divorce. Someone leaked the details because they wanted it to be private. 
After the details were linked, she took it onto her Instagram, wrote a long paragraph saying, please stay out of our business. We're very private. Um, those words didn't come out of her mouth, so the blogs are just posting anything. Child, these are court documents. Can't nobody make up no court documents now, all right? Period. Um, if this is true, allegedly, that she's accusing him of being jealous of her fame, insecure, and a narcissist. The first thing that came to my mind when reading this was the Ashanti Rain On Me video with Lorenz Tate. If you know, you know. In the video, the And then we have Lorenz Tate. He was playing her love interest, the boyfriend in the video. In the video, it shows Ashanti in her prime, in her fame, walking on red carpets, being Ashanti, right? Lorenz Tate plays the boyfriend in the background. I guess she has like a normal boyfriend or whatever. Whether he's normal or not, it's like he's looking at her and he's like, got this jealousy and hate in her, in his eyes for her. Like, it's like the spotlights, camera flashing all up on her and Lorenz Tate is just looking like, you know what I mean? And then it's like, when they get home, it's a part of the video, if you watch the extended version, it's a part of the video where she comes home from like a show or tour or something. She walks upstairs to the room because they have this big old mansion and it's big old pictures of a show. Long story short, she comes home, she finds him cheating. You know, it's kind of like a thing where he's like been abusive to her verbally, talks down on her and da 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 da. Um, he leaves, the, well, she leaves the house, he um, leaves, um, drives the car, boom, gets to a car crash. Kind of like the same synopsis of Keisha Cole's Trust and Believe. But the main thing people fail to realize is these men being very, hmm, what's the word? Being very butthurt over their women's success. Not just a woman, their women. Now, we get the whole man taking care of the household, a uh, man being a breadwinner and this and that. But, baby, we are living in new times. We've been living in new times. Ain't no woman just finna stay at home, cook clean, and, and take care of your ass all day long. Like, women's out here getting to the bag. And it's always been like that, but it's like they're more now than ever, okay? And I feel like with the Tiana and Iman situation, even though we don't know their situation, all of this is alleged. But... In her court documents, it said that she accuses him of being jealous of her fame, being insecure, and being a narcissistic. These are things that a lot of women in her position go through that is not talked about. When a woman in power is in, you know, a relationship and she may be the breadwinner or things like that, it's, it's, it's way more complicated than meets the eye, okay? Same type of weak men are also weak for not letting their women you know what I'm saying? Do their thing. You know, blossom and sprout into, you know, their plant that they're supposed to be. I don't know why I just compare women to a plant, but just hear me out. I feel like, you know, Iman was this, you know, NBA player. I feel like he got a couple rings with the Cavs, but, you know, since then, his career been... And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that he retired to become a rapper. Wasn't we just talking about Keisha Cole? Didn't Keisha Cole baby daddy do the same thing? Retired from basketball to become a rapper. So you gave up the NBA oh, for a rap? Oh man, I knew you was gonna start. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a long time coming. You only twenty nine. I know, and that's the beauty of it. The beauty of it is, like, people need to understand that I do have the option of playing in the league, but you get, I, you, you get to. Boy, if you don't get name one Keisha Cole baby daddy song. That's what I thought. Yes, I keep calling him Kisha Cole, Baby Daddy. We all know his name, Booby. But Booby should have stayed his ass in the NBA, just like Iman Shepard. And you wouldn't be having to count your girl or your baby mama's pockets all day long telling her what she needs to do and what she don't need to do. Because them be the same type of men that be trying to keep their woman in the house all day long. Okay, remember when Tiana took that little hiatus? Yeah, she took a little hiatus to take care of her child that her and Iman produced. This is before the newborn, so we are talking about Junie. Yes. She took a while off to, you know, do that. And then, you know, she came back in the game. And then briefly after she came back in the game, she said that she wanted to retire from music. And everybody was looking like, where did that come from? Where did that come from, child? Allegedly, Iman Shepard, narcissistic ass, is behind that, okay? And this is why, you know, 
you don't never glorify somebody else's relationship because you don't ever know what they go through. You don't know what they put up with. You don't. You just don't know. You never know. So, you know, praying for Tiana, of course, and her family, their children, also Iman, because let's be real, he ain't gonna find nothing better than that. Okay. Um, I hope they do make it work because they are a beautiful couple with a beautiful family. But sister. I understand, you know, we made that Instagram post. You don't want nobody in your business and shit like that. But listen, blink twice if you're in trouble, okay? Don't be wrong for leaving the situation because a lot of women feel like they got to stay in situations, you know, for their family or, you know, they might have a status together that, you know, man, fuck all that shit. If you're not happy, if you're not being treated right, and you, you you know how you're supposed to be treated. You you know what's supposed to be going on. If you ain't feeling like it's going like that and you've been trying and it's still not working, let it go. That's the hardest thing to do, but that's that's the easiest solution to something like that. Let it go. Let it go. So praying for y'all. If you can make it work, make it work. But if you got to let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Okay, period. Oh, that'll be the end of our teacup topics. Let's get into some hustler talk. In the cut with my twin, we be vibing. Okay, period. So, on this episode of Hustler Talk, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship. Okay? Can we get into the nitty gritty real quick? Can we get an um, online definition of entrepreneurship, please? All right. Look it up right now. Online definition of entrepreneurship is the creation or extraction of economic value in ways that generally entail beyond the minimum amount of risk and potentially involving values besides simply economic ones. What do that mean? I have no idea. Let's read another definition. Entrepreneurship is when an individual who has an idea acts on that idea, usually to disrupt the current market with a new product or service. Now, I like that. It says entrepreneurship usually start as a small business, but the long-term vision is much greater to seek high profits and capture market share with innovative new ideas. Hmm. Hmm, I like that. Uh, Any more definitions? Networking within your niche. An entrepreneur is someone who takes on the adventure and risk of starting a new business. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool. So basically, yeah, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship. Okay, we're going to be talking about how, first of all, as much as it's promoted, and yeah, be your own boss, be your own boss, baby. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let, let's, let's get right into it, okay? I, I ain't going to say hate. I just don't agree with people who feel like you know what I'm saying? A nine to five ain't this, it ain't that. Be your own boss. Child, if you don't know how to work for nobody else on some real shit, you will never know how to work for yourself. Do you hear me? Popular to contrary belief. If you don't know how to work for anybody else, you will never know how to work for yourself. Working for yourself is the biggest discipline. It's, 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 a, life mission. it's a life mission. It's everyone's life mission to learn how to completely work for themselves, how to completely be for themselves, how to completely love themselves, how to completely protect themselves, how to completely be confident within themselves, how to completely put themselves on a higher pedestal. That is the life mission. And, and, and life goes on when? Like, when do life stop? When you die, right? So, therefore, there is no true time on life. Life, you know, life is sudden. Like, you, you don't know. But what I'm trying to say is entrepreneurship is 24-7. If you a real entrepreneur and you a real boss, you working 24-7. You working on your vacation. You are working on your break. You working when you at home laying down by yourself with your man, with your woman, with your kids. You are working when you are working. You are working when you ain't working. You are working when you are twerking. You are working when you are shirking. Okay? Like, literally. Like, <laughs> entrepreneurship is literally 24-7. A 9 to 5 is exactly what it is. A 9 to 5. You go in at 9 and you leave at 5. And after that, you ain't got to worry about the business, doing this, doing that. Woo, woo, woo. You only went there to play your role. At that 9 to 5, your role was whatever your role was. Being an entrepreneur, that role is the top. So you have to know how to do everything. Okay? Me, for example, with this podcasting, I am 
the host, I am the editor, I am the producer, I am the director, I am the creative director, I am the fucking interviewer, I am shit, my own guest, I am my own everything right now, okay? Literally, everything. Now, when I get to the top, I could be able to hire people. And when I hire people, I could tell them how I want them to do this, this, that, 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 because I did everything. That's like working at McDonald's, okay? You start off as the employee, okay? Matter of fact, you start off as the fries. You know, they always put a motherfucker on them fries first. So you start off with them fries. Then they put you on the cash register, okay? Then once you know how to do that, you can go to drive through. Now, drive through like a whoop, 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 whoop. Now, the kitchen, sometimes it's before drive through, sometimes it's after. It depends on you. If you're a female, they most likely gonna throw you on drive through first. If you're a male, they most likely gonna throw you in that kitchen. But either way it go, the roles can be reversed. So if you're going drive through first, you're gonna go in that kitchen. You're gonna learn how to make all the burgers. And then once you do that, they're gonna move you up to the manager. Once you're the manager, what you doing? You helping everybody with all the above. And then out the manager, what is that? The fucking store manager. Now you the one over the manager. Now you the one in the office doing all the paperwork that the fucking fries and the cash register and the people in the kitchen drive through don't even see. Only a manager sees it, but the manager not even going to handle it. That's the store manager. And then who's over the store manager? The goddamn store franchiser who bought the franchise. That's the motherfucker who's calling all the shots and got everybody else in there working while they working on their other businesses. So it's truly levels. It's truly levels. That's why I tell people all the time, I don't knock jobs. I never did knock a job. It's like ever since the fucking pandemic hit, everybody been so damn rich, too rich to get a job. Please, never, not me. A job is a stepping stone to get to where you need to be. If you have goals, if you got things that you want to do, use that 9 to 5 to get to where you need to be. Because, or otherwise, a 9 to 5 is going to keep you stuck in a cycle, which a lot of people feel like they're stuck in. That's why they preach that. You need to work for yourself. You need to be your own boss. Ooh, everybody not built to be a boss. And that's okay, too. You could be financially free without being your own boss. And we're going to get to it later down in this podcast show. So uh, if you made it to this far in the video, make sure you like this video. Make sure you comment below anything that we've been talking about. Comment below your thoughts on me. Comment below your thoughts on how I'm doing so far because this is, like I said, my first episode, we going to get it in. My personality will, you know, come out a little more. Okay, I could be a little goofier or whatnot. But so far, I'm loving it. I'm loving the vibe so far. I love talking to you guys, even though I can't hear you. But you can hear me. So, you know what I'm saying? You know, entrepreneurship is very important. It's all about working with what you got to literally get what you want. Use what we got to get what we want. Oh, please. That's the real, real tea. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm started with what I got. I invested, you know, some some money behind this shit. And, you know, it's still kind of not flowing how I wanted to. But, you know, that's just how life works. I'm still here on time, recording, um, keeping on my promises, recording on this day so I can drop on this day. Like, like we're going to get it in there. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. Like, nails ain't done. Wig ain't all the way on. She, I can't find my lip gloss. I woke up without my damn nose ring this morning. It's like anything that could go wrong could possibly go wrong. This damn ring light is leaning a certain way on this thing because it's not standing up correctly. And then the thing to hold the phone on the ring light broke. So now I got my phone on the heater that's on top of this, that's on top of that. And if the wrong movement be made, everything's going to fall on the floor. Like we really hustling right now. We is hustling at the trap. We in the trap. Well, this ain't no trap. This is my mama house. But th th this this the trap. We in the trap. Okay, like I said, we started from ground one. So if you guys want to be a part of me, of this journey, make sure y'all keep following me. Keep, you know, tuning in to my podcast. Make sure you follow my other channel, Me and Mac. That's where all the vlogs, mukbangs, Q&As, pranks, all the, you know, YouTuber life shit going to be on there. And yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, as far as hustler talk and entrepreneurship, I feel like betting on yourself and investing on yourself is going to be the best investment and bet you can do. Okay? Can't nobody believe in you more than you believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself enough, but you want everybody else to believe in you and support you, you're not going to get it. And if you is going to get it, you're going to keep needing that validation and that, you know what I'm saying? You're going to keep needing it. And it's going to be a point where ain't nobody going to be able to refill that for you. And then you're going to take it to the heart. So I'm telling you right now, you need to be your own believer. Do it. It's better to do it. It's better to do it when nobody believes in you because there isn't no stigma. There isn't no cap of expectations and things 
for you to do what you want to do. Like, if you just start, ain't no expectation. Just do it how you... It, this is the moment to do it how you want to do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, me complaining about this and then not having this done, that done, and this not coming in time. I'm on here like this now. Nine times out of ten, y'all going to see me like this again. Willingly, though. On a chill day, I'm in my pretty hustle about it. Okay? Because for real, okay? So, on this topic of entrepreneurship, um, I just wanted to say to anybody that's out there thinking about it, like, like, like the definition said, entrepreneurship is when you bring a thought, an idea, into fruition, and you act on it. So, if you think about starting your own cupcake business, because you bake cupcakes all the time, once you bring that thought out of your head and bring it into fruition, you are now entrepreneurship. You don't need to be a millionaire to be an entrepreneur. You don't need to have $100,000 to be an entrepreneur. You just need to be pursuing your innovative ideas, thoughts, and act on it. And you are now an entrepreneur. Period. On to the next segment. For our next segment, this will be our Hustler Hotline, where you will be able to send your stories for life advice to this email that will be linked on the screen, okay? Make sure you email this email. You can send, you know, funny stories, sad stories. Don't, I don't want it to be too sad now. But, you know, send, send things that's going on in your life for any advice, any commentary, any questions that you all have, and things of that nature. Make sure you... Email this email here. This is my um, podcast email, and I will be able to respond to it. I will be picking one once a week, okay? If we get more, I'll try to fit more in. But for now, we're going to start off with one hustler hot meal per, me- per week, and we're going to add it to the um, episodes towards the end of the segment, and we're going to be doing it like that. And I will answer all your questions, your life stories, all of that through my perspective and shit like that, okay? Period, okay? I'm not perfect. I got story time, stories to tell as well. That's another reason I created this platform for myself. I truly created this platform for me to speak on things that I've been through and shed a light on things that not a lot of people are talking about, Um, to be completely honest, and, you know, get my perspective, a real bitch perspective. There's not too many real bitches out here doing what I do. It's a lot of copycasts, a lot of... You know what I mean? Just people linking up, just talking about, just saying anything at their damn mouth. Ain't nobody talking about nothing that a lot of people want to hear, okay? You know, we're going to be getting into a lot of drama, gossip too, okay? We're going to keep it fun. We're going to keep it funky, but we're going to keep it real at the same time, okay? Because you talking to the realest bitch out here. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, What's on my playlist? Let's see what's on the playlist. Um, I've been bumping that. Um, dun, 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 dun. Hold on, y'all. When, when I think of a song, I got I got to think of the whole. I got to play the whole song in my head. So hold on, here it comes. This is a song that's on my playlist. Uh, uh. He's feeling all right while he's hanging on my coochie. He's touching a million poochie. Doing good with your coochie. Follow Asia. He's feeding me sushi. Good idea. Yeah, that's Flo Millie. I, I like that. I like that Flo Millie. Ron Artest uh, remix. The Flo Millie never lose me. Mm-hmm. He speeding the rape all his hand on my coochie. He touching the Millie poochie. Doing good, bitch. I'm Gucci. Fly to Asia. He feeding me sushi. I can't wait till she feel this day. I love her voice. I love her flow. She's so cute. She's so quirky and like witty in a way. I love her voice. It's so like animated and and she a Capricorn, I believe. So shout out to her. Ice Spice is a Capricorn too. So. We, we might do something around Capricorn season for all the rappers and stuff like that. Also, you can also send your songs, any beats um, to this email here. Um, anybody that want to be placed, uh, that want to place their business, products, or service for ads, um, air promotions, please email this, my business email. So any song reviews, if you're a rapper, singer, you want me to review your songs, on my podcast, I would love to do so. Please send them here to this email, or please email me first. Okay, that's how we do business. Make sure you send an email to me. Like I said, any ad placements, promotions, send an email here. Um, I just want to say thank my viewers for watching. Thank you so much. This is my first episode, and, you know, it probably was a little shaky, a little rocky. I hope you guys truly, truly, truly like it. Um, 
I'm going to be coming better, coming harder. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do a lot of things, okay? Um, for, for it being my first episode, to the first um, two people who comment on my YouTube, um, comment their thoughts about any topics that we talked about, okay? So you have to watch the video. Um, make sure you comment your thoughts or whatever. Anybody that, the first two people that comment on my YouTube, they will be getting some free merch sent out to them. It would be the Pretty Hustler package, like I said, with the mask, with the edge wrap, the bonnets, and the satin hair wrap, okay? This is a satin, not even just a satin hair wrap. It's like a satin bag. It could be used for almost anything. It's multi-purpose. It's a satin bag with the drawstrings, okay? I would be sending it out to two of my pretty hustlers that comment on our video, okay? All my pretty hustlers is my pretty females that be out there hustling. All my handsome hustlers is all my fellas that be out there getting to that money too, okay? Period. Money don't make you real. It's what you do, and you know the type of person you are. Period. But period. Um, make sure you follow my podcast social media um pretty hustler tv that's p-r-e-t-t-y-h-u-s-t-l-r no e in hustler tv okay pretty hustler tv no e in hustler and make sure you guys follow me too that's pretty hustler mia same way pretty hustler no e mia m-i-a so that's pretty hustler mia make sure you guys subscribe to my youtube channel mia mac m-i-a and tell me you'll never want to lose me tell me you'll never want to lose me